spectrograms are perhaps one of the most useful representations of sounds for a music producer. Nowadays, you see them integrated into almost every plugin in saturation, maximizers, EQs, reverbs, audio manipulation plugins, and even audio visualizations. But what enables us to see audio in this manner? Sounds are naturally represented as waves, not frequency distributions. The key is transformation. More specifically, the STFFT, short or short time fast Fourier transform. Before we talk about using the short time fast Fourier transform, we'll have to have a basic understanding of the fundamental concept, Fourier transform. Think of the Fourier transform as a bridge between two worlds, the world of time and the world of frequency. Let me show you the difference between time and frequency. Here, I will play a sine wave of increasing frequency. Using this oscilloscope, we can visualize the time domain. The corresponding image is a waveform. However, if we choose to analyze the exact same sound in the frequency domain, it looks like this. An increasing curve representing the increasing frequency directly. Now that we understood the two domains, time and frequency, it's time to see how the Fourier transform truly combines these two realms. The following is a simplified formula for the Fourier transform, as well as its inverse function. Observe that if we plug in a function of time, the integral transform will result in a function of frequency, which is exactly what a spectrogram attempts to achieve with waveforms. Now, let's apply the Fourier transform to our good old square wave. Here, we have a periodic square wave repeating with a time period of t. Thus, the angular frequency is 2 pi by t. Plug in the necessary constants and variables into the Fourier transform. We get 1 over the time period integration from negative t divided by 2 to t divided by 2 of the signal x of t with respect to e to the negative jk omega naught t dt. Since the integral only appears from negative t to t, we can simplify the integral as such. Solving for this integration, we obtain this form, where the u substitution caused constants from the exponents to appear in the denominator. Evaluating t from negative t1 to t1, we get this following expansion. As a result, we get the general solution for the Fourier series coefficient, which we can then utilize to graph the frequency content of a square wave. Setting k to various whole numbers, we obtain the frequency or harmonics that make up a square wave. The Fourier transformation tells us some key information about recreating the square wave, which is that if we add up all harmonics in decreasing amplitudes, According to the equation, we can actually recreate the sound just by using sine waves. The same principle applies to more complex waveforms, such as in voice recording. If one zooms in close enough, it will resemble a continuous waveform. What the Fourier transformation does is that it maps out the frequency distributions of all the sine waves needed to recreate a sound. By taking some of the most dominant sine waves, some are actually successful in using just a few sine waves to emulate speech. She cut with her knife. She cut with her knife! When examining a Fourier series, you might notice something. 
which is how it resembles our AP Calculus concept, power series. In Unit 10, we have learned to use the Taylor and Maclaurin power series to approximate functions, but they could only do so at a single point. Joseph Fourier, on the other hand, was able to show that an infinite series of sines and cosines could approximate a function globally. We are getting close to understanding the full scientific background of spectrograms. But before that, we'll have to talk about a specific technique, the STFFT. The concept behind the short time fast Fourier transformation is actually quite intuitive. If we just take the Fourier transformation for this entire waveform, what we get is not suitable for a fast moving spectrogram. Therefore, we'll have to cut a small time segment of this waveform. Use this to be analyzed by a fast Fourier transform. This will give us the frequency domain of the same signal. Then we'll transform the frequency domain into a color-coded time frequency domain, which is exactly what a spectrogram attempts to accomplish. This process will be repeated many times throughout the entire waveform and across time. Now that we know about the mathematical and algorithmic background of the spectrogram, it's time to see how to implement it. The JUICE framework is a set of functions and libraries based on the language C++. It provides a convenient way for engineers to develop audio plugins and software. In this case, we will be specifically examining how to implement the fast Fourier transform using JUICE. By following JUICE's basic FFT tutorial, we could code a simple spectrogram that takes an input from a computer's microphone and computes a Fourier transform, and finally plotting them in a time frequency amplitude domain. Let's take a look at the specifics. First, we declare the variables required for implementing the FFT. Then, we'll initialize these variables in the constructor, code the sampling processing unit, and implement the pixel coloration. Finally, we'll update all the results onto the GUI. This is Warfare. Now for the ultimate test, writing letters using a spectrum. 